gentlemen, welcome. Yes, you are watching this previous with your host Paul Gordon and and your sometimes co-host uh, Andrew Barich, aka Bodie, and Whatever. we're on but here with with not not Donny. It, it's John Donny uh, Gebert, right? Yes. I didn't. Not. I don't want to Frenchify you like I have been. Yep. All week, as I've been doing promotions for the shows, right? we're going to have. I'm not even going to say the name because I don't want to put it in your heads. But anything anybody who can look at Donnie's name right now can think if I Frenchified him, what it sounds like if I Frenchified him. And and Donnie, you are here with uh, is it it's it's called View 2030. Is that right? I got that right. Uh, I would have uh, that ended like Indiegogo campaigns only go for 60 days and that just did not take off so many people like very learned smart people did not understand what the heck I was talking about so that that has come and gone but my but company the idea is, is still there. Yeah, yeah. The idea is moving along. It's just not moving along viral. I mean, you got to try viral these days. You got to so I. It's, threw up an Indiegogo bucket. I put out some material just to see if there was any interest. There wasn't enough. It was just too difficult to read. I mean, it's half my bad, but at the same time, the, the subject matter is so difficult. I could talk to Bitcoin people pretty easy, but talking to the average person who took an eighth grade civics class and think they know how all this whole system works, nah, no. I was way out of my depth on that one. No, hey. they, they, don't, they don't understand the difference between a blockchain and fiat. So, so what we're really... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I barely understand anything, let alone that. And uh, Bodhi will attest to that objectively. Yeah. But but essentially what you're talking about is an automated Congress. It's automate Congress, the direct republic model. Is that correct? Did I did I yeah. say that right? I got that right, yep. see? And yep, it's okay. But I got I got a little golf clap there. I, I appreciate yeah. the golf clap. I, I don't get those too often. So if if we're talking automate Congress, this is where the problem immediately lies. And the problem lies in trying to get people to understand the core technological element of what you're proposing. And that is blockchain, which is essentially a distributed open ledger system. Bodhi, do you do you have words on this? I don't know if you were gesturing or if you were doing uh, um, it's just, hand yeah. signs for the deaf, for, for our deaf audience. Bodhi will be your... Oh my gosh, if you're actually hand signaling to the deaf audience, all they understand is Paul is a tool, Paul is a tool, Paul is a tool. <laughs> <laughs> so... So would th th this is your big is this is this your biggest hurdle so far getting people to understand that part of it? Yeah, uh, essentially uh, half of the people are constitutionally minded and the other people are technologically minded. So when I'm talking blockchain to people, if they're confused, it really comes from either they don't understand the constitution or they think I'm talking about Bitcoin. So when I say we're going to use blockchain, it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's just a right. distributed open ledger, and we're essentially using it as a document system. Now, if we were to use this to vote, like just direct democracy, that would be chaos. And no, yeah, we don't have direct democracy for a reason. If you don't know why, homework. homework. Right. We don't have to get into that half hour nonsense now. <laughs> but I, the, the, let's just the, say a direct democracy is overt thuggery, whereas a republic is uh, covert thuggery. I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, see, now here's here's where we're going to start breaking up terms, right? Right. Originally in the Constitution, federalism was to the breaking up of states. And, yeah, I, okay, they created tax farms. Let's not call it anything else. But the whole purpose of federalism was Pennsylvania is going to do Pennsylvania. New York is going to do New York. And, right. and the only reasons they were getting together were for the very limited number of things that the federal government was going to do. Like protect the, the state years. governments from uh, tax uh, revolutions. <laughs> that would be one of the yeah, key right. things that the state right. actors wanted. Yes, right. but well, be that as it may. If you think about uh, trying to organize something the size of a nation state via 1776, I don't think it gets any better than this. Like, just to say, are there mechanical flaws in the Constitution circa 2017? Absolutely. Because we could take federalism down to the individual level. We don't have to do it by state anymore. So 
by being able to allow each individual to be their own representative, you don't have to vote on anything. You join your own subcommittee and you put your money where you want it to go. There's no choke point where someone else has 750,000 constituents, all of which are adding to a pool of funds that that person may or may not have access to. And you vote with money, right? It's not voting uh, with money because you don't have to participate. Okay. Well, if you choose to participate, is it voting with money? Are you saying with your money, yeah, I, I want to support this. That, that's what you're doing. Am I wrong? Um, uh, I guess that it just I'm, – I'm delineating the difference between a process and a contribution. The process doesn't have a vote, but, yes, you contribute to the portion that you're going to – if you wanted all defense and no welfare, then you would pay for all defense and no welfare. And if you wanted all welfare and no defense, you'd pay all welfare and no defense. The whole point is to figure out which systems are garbage and nobody wants, and you let those titrate out. You, you, you figure out who wants what and who's going to pay for what first. And the stuff that nobody wants, that there's no, well, Washington deemed it good for us. Nope, they're gone. Nobody wants it. It doesn't matter what they want. It, it's gone. Hmm. And when you take out that choke point for the money and the administrative shuffling about how thing gets done, it sounds crazy. But when everybody in the every, all 200 million adults make their own laws, you don't end up with that much different laws. That first page is alarmingly similar. You so, and, go so, ahead, Bodie. And small. It's yeah. Gonna, and and it, small. It's a, and, lot of the, a lot of the earmark, a lot of the, the corruption. Um, I, I don't think it would go far enough, but it's definitely a step. So, so well, this is just a step to determine how, who wants to pay for what. This right. is only the step of we're getting rid of the garbage agencies that were saddled, saddled on us by politicians who claimed we saw a benefit. Right. Whatever. So you, in our current federal model, uh, we have three, uh, allegedly, I say allegedly, uh, Whenever I speak of government, it's always good to put the word allegedly before <laughs> whatever you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We allegedly have three branches of, of government, the judiciary, the executive, and the legislative. And they're supposed to provide checks and balances, which I would – maybe I would argue whether they intended it or not, they ostensibly claimed that they intended on using that to limit the growth of the federal government. But they had a problem with their model. What was the fundamental problem with their model that allowed them to circumvent the checks and balances? Well, all the checks and balances really got circumvented statutorily. They, they made things ineffective as far as the administrative processes. They made it very difficult to check and balance each other. And then precedent has just metastasized the whole legal system and we, you know, now the burden of proof is on the people to get rid of a law. How, how in the hell does that ever happen? I, I don't even understand it. So with one election, you basically snatch up two branches of the government. Because the, when, you, when you get the president, you're getting the presidency, the VP, you're getting all of the agencies that the, belong the to the executive. whole executive branch, right. Yeah. And then you're getting all of the judiciary appointments for right. the next couple of years. So... With one election, you've got two branches mobbed up. Mobbed up. Uh, that's great. Mobbed up. A billion dollars into that thing because it controls trillions of dollars worth of money. Now, what? The, what go ahead. The, then you get to the legislature where most of the voting and most of the participation for the people are is supposed to be able to go on. No way. About 50 or, 50 or so senators and congressmen combined are running the whole racket. And all of the other ones are on the dole. So you, if you're you're lucky, if you have one of the power players in Washington that has access to the right committees or has you know a significant chair on the committee, it's all just checks and balances. The whole thing has been strategically locked out so that people can't get in front of the problems, and that the system is allowed to continue to perpetuate doing what it does at the rate at which it's doing it or greater because they don't ever spend less. They always spend more, and then they find more mechanics or more taxes or etc. Yeah, I was actually specifically thinking of Article 1, Section 8, which to me, Article 1, Section 8 pretty much creates godlike powers for the government. It, cre it essentially gives the government the power to tax, and there's no limitations on it. I don't, I don't even know why they passed the 16th Amendment. They didn't need it. 
the Article 1, Section 8 gave them. The only thing the 16th Amendment did is it, it calmed people down who, up until that point, always chafed at the idea of an income tax, which is just one of many types of uh, taxation that they could possibly utilize. But in essence, that Article 1, Section 8, I mean, I think you identify that as a problem. Am I not correct in that? Yeah. That, as, as far as I'm concerned, it's the problem. It's the because nobody has the right to tax. So I don't know who delegated the right to tax, but nobody had it to delegate. Exactly. And, and they essentially made it up. And the, the problem, the, the philosophy of the Constitution is pretty much stellar. I don't think anybody's really going to argue against essentially Western values, et cetera. Et cetera. The, the, the philosophy is there, but the mechanics were put in place to facilitate the philosophy. Yeah. And in 1776, there was no funding mechanism according to those mechanics, or, or I'm sorry, according to those that philosophy. So in other words, you article... end up getting an extra philosophy called authoritarianism, and that gets thrown into Article One, Section Eight, as a pragmatic measure to get the the whole ball rolling, to get the funding secured, so that this can exist. And they violated all the tenets of liberty with that. But then again, it's 1776; they had to get it done somehow, and that's where they were looking at it from. So. Not to, I don't put my moral philosophy in a time machine. I'm not going to go back. I didn't live in 1776 having 20 to 50 years of hard life before I sat down and tried to write a document to do this. So I don't get to hating, but I can say that that, that philosophy being tossed in there created an economic moral hazard. And that moral hazard is everywhere. It's throughout our economy. It's where the Fed gets its power. It's where the federal government gets its power to tax, which causes multiple second and third and fourth and 184th order effects. See, so that's really a, just a, I look for root causes. I was an intelligence analyst in the military. So that's the root cause. If you take out that economic moral hazard, you restore all the brilliant philosophy of the constitution and you've removed the shady mechanics. Now it doesn't function and you have to replace mechanics to get it to function again without that piece. So as I'm talking to you, well, so, some of what I like about your your proposal is I actually think that you can bridge some some gaps or, or divisions that, I mean, even from my perspective, are currently unbridgeable. There are unbridgeable div divisions for me between myself as, a, as, as basically an anarchist and a minarchist. This, to me, is – I think that it satisfies – both core uh, drivers, the minarchist who believes that government is necessary and the anarchist who believes in a government of one. This is kind of like, okay, it's, well, let's, let's go ahead. Why not both? It's, it's kind of a merge between the two. It's still, it's still minarchy in a way. I don't think the, the, the anarchists that would actually go along with this are the ones who already understand the cryptocurrency and the ones who believe in some kind of objective morality. They would see this as a feasible market vehicle for I, accumulating uh, collective uh, decision making. Here's the level of minarchism here. If you're not willing to agree to Title 18, and I can understand Title 18 today, that's a criminal law for anybody who doesn't know what Title 18 is. There's drug laws in, in the criminal law. There's a lot of statutory everything that doesn't belong there. So let's look more at a, an old school common law what we would, if Title 18 exists in the common law, it would be no murder, no rape, no theft. You know, some of the communists get off the bandwagon at that point because they don't like property definitions, et cetera. But we're not worried about those kind. I mean, there's not that many communists. So I don't think we have to worry about the very small <laughs> there's, people. There's who hidden commies. You can make an argument against property. I don't have to worry about them. It really comes down to Title 18. You're going to agree to not murder, not rape. not. And if you can't agree to live to that, all right forcible relocation for you sorry we can't even turn our back on you and you're not going to murder us like if the, if the anarchist is going to make their argument at that line okay all nine of them can go with the communists no big deal <laughs> most of the intelligent anarchists aren't arguing against title 18 well they, they might be arguing against some sort of state function and this isn't necessarily an actual state it's more like a privatized state without a geography if you can kind of, I sent a picture just so you can look at it. Okay. But it's a privatized yep. state system without a geography. The left can have a state, let, let, the right can have me, a state. I'm going to show that real quick here. I have that map up here and I will, I got to find it. Okay, there, boom, 
There it is. It's it behind Bodie chaotic, there. You see it there. You see you the, were... the light blue, the light pink, red. These are all uh, in in the, the picture, which I, I'm not sure if you could see that, uh, but it says these could all be states. Okay, go right. ahead. Think about, there's certain places in Europe and even in Africa. In Africa, I, I point that as more Europe doesn't have too many civil unrest problems. They don't have governance problems. They don't have atrocity problems. But even in South Africa, you can see very small countries with their own jurisdictions and their own laws and stuff like that. And they get respected as long as the, the people around them are civil. So if you could imagine your law being more like a Netflix subscription and not having a geography, then it doesn't, the enforcement mechanism might confuse you a little bit, but it doesn't really change much. Well, it also kind of negates forcible relocation because exactly. that, those it, you don't actually have to forcibly remove anyone. They're not participating in the system. They don't benefit from the system. They don't benefit from the products and services within that system. Now, I have a uh, the, the one point that I had wanted to make earlier was I think I have a difference with you in how I believe that the Constitution came into being. I don't are I don't I don't I don't really don't believe that the Constitution was an attempt to reflect uh, a noble philosophy. I believe that the Constitution was the fruit of the reality of power that existed at that time. You had for There's, for for a lot of again. conditions, which I I, I don't want to. I could spend a whole show talking about this. There, for a lot of reasons, the folks that lived in that time had an assumption of left aloneism versus another group of people who wanted their stuff. <laughs> so what you end up with and, in, is, is a constitution that reflects the reality of power at that time. The left aloneism people had some serious power. And so... They had to create something that at least gave lip service to this idea of individualism. And in part, you can say it is because in America and other parts of the world, but certainly really majorly in America for a lot of reasons, many of which had to do with geography and other circumstances, uh, uh, individualism was actually being lived out like at a practical not not philosophically thinking about it. It just was. It was a it was the reality. I mean, I, I live, you know, not me personally, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Colony Man, he lives, you know, 20 miles away from the nearest village. And, uh, you know, the, the mayor of a town that happens to have that jurisdiction, he doesn't like what that guy's doing. He's going to have to put a lot of resources to stop him. So right. so it, it's to me, it's just simply a, I, 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 I actually, and what Bodhi, what you said was, which I disagree with, that this is something that would only appeal to, uh, how, did, how, how did you word it? Did you say uh, uh, anarchists who believe in objective morality? I, 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 this may be more pragmatic. I, I actually think this is a more pragmatic thing. This is uh, a recognition of the reality of power that individuals networking together in non coercive ways can provide more for themselves than individuals who don't. Mm -hmm. And there could be some utilitarian purpose for having larger scale uh, systems rather than... I, I could even see uh, this as a, as a pioneer model, kind of like how, I don't want to relate it to Bitcoin, but how altcoins came about. Why wouldn't there also be alternative systems? This is actually, yes, uh, I was going to get to this. Yes, that's right. my question for you, Donnie. You're introducing an idea, and actually, I'm really intrigued by the idea. I'm totally. You're calling it a direct republic. I love it. It's great. Uh, well, that's that's essentially the components. People people long for the directness of a direct democracy because they hate being separated from what they're contributing to to the results that they're gaining. But then again, when you get the, that vehicle is democracy, you're pretty much asking for a hemlock. Eventually, I mean, eventually, <laughs> that's how you get it. So. You don't want to win that one, and you don't want to stay in the game long enough to win. So, Well, you don't want to Republic, lose, that's for sure. Oh, don't worry. No, in, in that system, Hemlock is winning. <laughs> yeah, but you Trust want to me, be the Hemlock of, giver and right, not the Hemlock givee. The Hemlock means you're out of it. So, yeah, that's you know, what I'm saying. There's at least some positive. It, it is yeah, interesting. Uh, that. The purpose of a, of a Republic is to, 
separate, federalize, get down into your own little segments and find a way to work out amongst each other. And I understand why that was very difficult a long time ago, but now it's ridiculously easy. And the only reason it hasn't been done is because there's a whole lot of pensions at stake. That's it. And nobody really wants a solution to this problem. They want to perpetuate the cycle of, well, we go to Washington, we do what we can. There's good, there's good money in it for us. If we can make something happen, that's fine. But the realities of Earth are just too difficult. Got to make the I mean, best of a like, bad situation. I haven't seen a politician with a good idea in about, I don't know, 30 years. Like even Clinton had a good idea or two. Ever since then, it's just been reactionary nonsense. And boy, has it been expensive. Bodhi, you wanted to say something? Go ahead. Uh, the idea about uh, wanting to take responsibility, like wanting to be involved, wanting to take responsibility, I think that could be a uh, a, a, a a roadblock. I I, a I do too. I think a lot of people... responsibility. That's the beauty of it because well, the state puts responsibility on you to participate. If you don't have to, only the people who want to show up. But that's part of the thing is there's a whole mass of people who use the government, anarchists included, as a scapegoat because they don't want to be responsible. Yeah, they, sure. they don't want to actually, yeah, they don't want to actually, they, they, they uh, contributing to an invisible hole is not as, as, that you feel like you have to, is not as, oh. it's not as much pressure on you as contributing to something specific that, 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 that makes you. survival or something. Right. Where, where? Where are we drawing the line between specialization and dodging responsibility? Because some people, they're so specialized in the things that they do in their life, they may not have time for certain things. They may not come to the same conclusions because they didn't have the time and energy to look into this stuff. Well, I have sat down. I, I don't name drop, but you guys know who I've been talking to. That's the only person that was able to read to the bottom of that PowerPoint without stopping, literally. To me, it was weird that he even had questions. Why? Why? Because I'm the only person cross-pollinating myself with all of these ideas in my car, even though I listen to that guy in a podcast, and then I listen to a different guy in a podcast, and listen to four more after that. I'm the only weirdo in the car doing it. Here I am thinking these people are cross-pollinating each other sometimes because I listen to one and then the next in my head. Oh, they must have talked to each other. They know this. So eventually you start coming up with, wait a minute, how come nobody else had thought of this? And, it, and you, I mean, they're the ones who told me. They're the ones who gave me the idea. How did it come about? Okay. Apparently, I was the only one looking for all of those things at the same time because all of those people have jobs, lives, kids. They're doing other things. So we, it wasn't that I was not looking to take my own responsibility. It was nobody really had a better idea how to do that, and nobody was necessarily yeah, looking for that. They looked for their own peace. I don't think Bodie's talking in that in that sense of responsibility, uh, and I'm certainly yeah. not either. I'm talking about people don't want to take care of people uh, outside of their immediate circle. People don't want to have to make choices. People don't want to have to face uh, competition that's not in some way, shape, or form artificially hindered by the government. They want protection. They want it's assurances. And it's a lot easier for them to go to a poll booth right. uh, once every couple of years. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it's not and, about and, not willing to face ideas. Cause, and, 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 and actually, I, I don't think even if the, a lot of these folks had the time, uh, uh, and I don't want to, I'm, 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 I'm asking you some challenging questions. I still love your idea. I'm not sure so far from what I've heard, I'm not sure that your idea is going to work starting off at the United States level. I think your idea is going to work as a distributed, if you will, a distributed Republic. That is a non-geographical Republic where individuals right. Pull their resources voluntarily together, and and what Bodhi said, you're going to have competition. You're going to have other direct republics that will emerge, and you could even have like one neighbors in one direct republic, another neighbor. I don't know to the degree to which that will happen. Sure, but if if you if you don't have a baseline agreement on the the crimes on Title 18, if you don't have that baseline agreement, you can't have. A ge you have to have a geographical restriction because your neighbor can't be a possible potential murderer. Well, it and in a different like, there's a big difference between people living in Juarez, where a block away is Mexico, and a murderer only has a block to travel and then a block to go back into a different 
legal system, well, you really wouldn't want to have that everywhere. But if you can have that same similar understanding of not of of the property crimes and the the heinous crimes, the real the stuff that everybody wants law for, which doesn't seem to be a problem, then you end up getting, like you said, direct republics, and essentially one is Democrat and one is Republican. I mean, if you think about it. And then, or, yes, there or, could be or more, but more. just the there will be probably more. Uh, the other, right? The, the, the you're you're not going to be able to have two neighbors live side by side if one neighbor thinks that he can kill the other neighbor. That goes without saying. Uh, uh, gonna get but no, no, what what people think and what legal systems exist on one property line for another are different. My neighbor could think he could kill me tonight. I, I can't do nothing about that, even though we're in the same jurisdiction. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about what would be considered a jurisdiction. And if you look at the difference between people living in Juarez who have Mexico a block away, imagine having being that person. You live close to a border, except the people in Juarez don't murder as a, a, the people. Now, granted, the Zetas are down there. That's a different thing. There's there's different specific property crimes that happen down there and people crimes, but not by the vast majority of the population. So also a lot of the reasons for those crimes a lot of the reasons for the violence is kind of because of the border because of those restrictions because of those um yep uh, trade uh, almost embargoes or, or however you want to look at it, it every uh, barrier you can think of it's yes. very difficult for you to decide uh you know what i don't like this service that's being provided in this geographical area and and it's such as that's essentially what you're talking. You're talking about the emergence of a governance uh, service that is run uh, by. I, I know you don't like the word votes. Uh, I'm going to use the word vote anyway. Uh, but it's run by the monetary votes of of the customers. Uh, <laughs> what you support is what the service provides. What you don't support, the service doesn't provide. I want to, I Unless you choose it, like like roads become a pay to play model. All of your local stuff, like there's no free rider problem um, to a certain extent. The free, it, and there's no one using a service and not paying for it. Unless I mean, there will be charity, so let's well, not get away from that. But services, if, you, it, it right, won't if, understand it now. Right. If it's a pay to play model, then you're just paying to play. Roads will be like a penny a mile. So it's not going to be Or whatever that they are, whatever. Exactly. It's going to be ridiculously <laughs> you, low because you, of the volume. It's going to be ridiculously low. You could, and, end, you could end up with some roads, however, that businesses actually contribute to run and don't charge people for because they find a utilitarian purpose in allowing people to use those roads to get to their businesses. So we don't really right. exactly know how it'll merge. But and, and somebody's some going to pay might for disappear. it. Some roads <laughs> might disappear because some people don't want to pay for right. them. Yeah. But that's. But that's their local area and their business, and, and they'll figure that out because they live there and I don't. My area, I'll kick in a couple extra bucks because I don't feel like the car maintenance that comes with pothole roads. I grew up in rural Pennsylvania. Pothole roads comes with, ba with maintenance. Oh, so you, I would, well, where, I, where'd you grow up in PA? Uh, north of Scranton, like Carbondale. and. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm from Harrisburg. I live in Bethlehem right now, but I'm from Harrisburg, with, which is central, south central PA. Okay, so, so the A man, good, services, good. Like defense, they end up being more of a subscription. Um, certain services that you draw benefits from, like if you were to sign up for welfare, you wouldn't be able to just sign up, start collecting benefits for two years, and then not, and then unsubscribe. Nope, you're going to incur just like you would in any insurance contract. There's a point where you're contributing and you're not getting the benefits, and then there's a point where you're eligible for benefits, but you probably won't use them. And then there's a point where you may or may not have used the benefits and you might get cashed out of the system for benefits you didn't use. Honestly, an insurance model is a way better to pay for services by a subscription, like, like the Department of Defense, like something that you would handle at a national level. That's really more of a subscription kind of thing. Right. I, I actually have, I, I knew someone a few years ago, oh, like 10 years ago, actually. This isn't exactly what you're talking about, but in the insurance model, he was talking about an insurance model type of system. He called it a mutual assurance association, in which it you 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 basic you you pay for your services and you pay insurance for services that you might not necessarily be using, but you might need, like ambulance service, fire service, whatever 
yep. uh, the, the, the case might be. Now, you have uh, what you describe as a win-win solution. Could you tell me about your win-win solution? Well, if you don't like the services that you're paying for, you don't pay for them anymore. If you don't like your local cops because they're brutal or stupid or, I mean, whatever, you get all kinds of different. Sometimes the policeman's union gets into a decent decent police department and they start twisting their arm and getting them to do all kinds of chicanery. It, you really don't know necessarily where the problems from come from. It's very easy to blame a cop. And as much as I understand the arguments, let, if, you're, if you're dealing with it on the side of the road, you're way behind the problem. You're, you're reactionary on a ridiculous level. Uh-oh, that's your phone. I'm going to have to dock yeah. your pay on that one. <laughs> you're, 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 we, we paid him to be on this show. No, we didn't. I'd no. like to unsubscribe <laughs> from the service. I'd like to unsubscribe from that service right there. <laughs> that service. It was my daughter, too. Oh, how old's your daughter? <laughs> 13. Oh, I have a daughter. Oh. She's 12. She'll be 13 um, in December. Or no, November. Oh, my gosh. I said December, November. But anyway, so where were we before the phone call? Win-win solution. Uh, oh, so so there there'll be more than one. It, now this might sound a little weird to people, but you'd have more than one defense service. And I think a lot of people think, "What we're going to have two armies?" And I'm thinking more along the lines of, "You're going to have an air force, and you're going to have possibly some armor assets." But you know, the way the world is changing, I don't know about that. Um, you'll have people on the payroll whose job, you know, who's getting rid of Navy SEALs. My, they're a Swiss Army knife handy to have around. I don't think we're going we're gonna to get rid of that. So I don't think defense has any real issues getting paid for, but you might pay for some of those services a la carte. In other words, the nukes might not get funded, and maybe they will. I don't I'm know. I'm funding the nukes, man. <laughs> I'm funding no, the nukes. Let's just say that, that a lot of let, nuclear weapons are they, they were going to happen anyway. I don't think that somehow America having nuclear weapons would have foregone the problem of nuclear weapons. I don't think that for a minute. It's a necessary so dealing it's, with it. Nu nuclear weapons are a necessary fruit of statism, in my humble opinion. But but if you want to start looking at how that would be done, oh, that's um, it. That's it. That's it. We're, you know what? I'm pulling this car over. I'm pulling this car over right now. Oh wait, it is it is pulled over. <laughs> I can't hear you. We can't hear you, Donnie. No sound. No sound. You might you might be muted. You might have muted yourself, sir. Or or he may have muted himself to talk to his daughter. Okay. So uh what what I like about this idea so far is again, I like that that I think that this bridge is uh, not the the gap. But it bridges a gap, and it allows far more anarchists and minarchists to find some common ground. Not all anarchists and not all minarchists, but no. but I, I think it opens up the door to that possibility. And I think it even goes beyond that. I don't know what, what you think, Bodhi, but I think it goes beyond minarchists even to limited government folks. We'll be looking at this and thinking, hmm, you know. I well, my, my, my big question is what happens to the Supreme Court? So all of the oh, and he's back. Welcome back. Through the uh, through the overall um, process. So if we were to all become our own legislators and make the reorganization that it would take to do that, the mechanics of the Constitution no longer function. There's no way 200 million people can write laws and then the judiciary interpret them. Right. However, when you get 200 million people to write laws, that first page is the same. You only end up with two or three other pages, depending upon what the person is involved in. So international trade law should have nothing to do with me unless I want protections from certain problems that arise from international trade. For example, it's a little hyperbolic, but just work with it. I don't want Chinese special forces showing up at my door to collect the debt. So I would be part of a trade guild that would prevent this kind of thing from happening with another nation state. Key employee insurance is a thing it's a very useful thing for stuff like this where you don't have to take the liability for yourself. It could be shared by the company. You could pay for it yourself. But, but in reality, a lot of people make, oh, but China will come and get us. No, they won't. They don't have the movement assets. That it, it's all a bunch of ignorant nonsense as, as far as the security problems that people come up with. It's ignorant nonsense. Anybody who knows security knows America's just fine. Uh, oceans on two sides, man, that'll, that'll solve some problems. Well, 
even without the oceans, America is a pretty right. vast land, uh, right. and there's a lot of armed people. The cost of coercion to coerce the entire United States of America is rather high, and I'm not, I don't think any nation could pay that. The cost of coercing one county isn't worth it because because there's enough Republicans in every county to to make it not worth anybody's time. There's too many gun owners in every county in this in this country. Way too many. It's it it's ridiculous. And that's why so I don't worry my... about security concerns. I really more worry about the administration and the finances and the messing with the economy. I worry about looking at those as the real problems. Anybody who's worried about defense doesn't understand defense. I. Yeah, that's a it's a Bush League argument. I don't I don't I mean, I could go through it so, with somebody, but it's really just to put their mind at ease. There's no problem. Not not that level, not strategic level problems here. It's just nope. Yeah. Um, uh, we do. Uh, oh, we have some questions. Let's get to some have, questions. Well, uh, one 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 major concern. He, he said, I uh, like many of Donnie's ideas, heard him on Ernest Hancock's Freedoms Phoenix. Uh, but one major concerning question is, would the existing system paradigm even allow it to develop? Um, I don't worry so much about that problem, I'll be honest. Because if we had that kind of tyranny problem, we got a whole other kind of problem set that we'd have to be working on. This system comes into being alongside the current system. It, it provides an option. It's almost like a lifeboat. It's like having a building and we're going to put some scaffolding up along the side to let people filter out. Instead of going down the stairs, they filter out into the scaffolding right across the street in a whole new building, one at a time. You can see who goes, who stays. You can see why they went, why they stayed. You can get a really good polling data of who's pissed off and who's not. It's just a really good um, organizational tool to say, this is a system that people don't like. This is the people that would go to the next system. They are already okay with how it functions. And honestly, uh, anarchists, libertarians, most of the Republicans. I mean, like 80%, and that's just a generous ballpark. It's probably a little higher. Most of the constitutionalists who take 25 minutes to sit down with this, they're completely okay with it too. Yeah. Uh, my, th my biggest fear is the person who's like a constitutional socialist and insists on it being that way, or an actual socialist who realized that all the people who are doing most of the work and most of the funding are about to abandon them, those people will come up with all kinds of nonsense objections just to keep us from leaving. Mm -hmm. But the point is to not push the reset button on society, have everybody do a mass migration. That, that, it's no. not going to happen. No, that's, not, that's not a solution. A massive so, reset is just going to produce another state, probably more brutal than the last. The lines that are on the map, they're fake. That's not how people live. I mean, I'm living in Texas. I, I know you're in Pennsylvania, Paul. Where are you? Be uh, um, I'm in, I'm in New Hampshire. You're in New Hampshire. We don't even hang out with our neighbors anymore. Nope. We live a decentralized life. My parents are in Pennsylvania. I have friends in the West Coast, the East Coast. I got friends in Europe. Like, all of our friends aren't our community anymore. We're already living this geographically decentralized life. Now we're just making the systems mimic what we already do. Yeah, you, if you, you, you draw you, a map of your family it would look a lot like that weird map I gave you. It wouldn't look like my family lives next door or within the same neighborhood or even within the same county. Not a lot of families do that anymore. So you're, that, you're describing a distributed, uh, a distributed community, if you will. Yeah. Right, right. But now if you could think about the nation, a nation state without a geography and making people sign up for it, you're, almost, you're creating a society. You're creating a group of people that say, we're going to do it this way, and we don't mess with anybody else. We don't care how you do it. Just leave us alone. And that's a solution that anybody who doesn't like it, we got to worry about those people. They can't keep their hands on themselves. That's a problem. But they should know up front that they're the problem, and we'll solve that problem for them if they need to, but let's avoid all that. It's not needed. All we have to do is high-five and, and pay for the things that we want and not pay for the stuff that we don't want. So now I like I like this thing you say here. You say lobbying has no choke point. It turns into advertising. See, that's with your system. You're as a lobbyist, you can't put all your money and all your resources to influence 400 people. <laughs> you have to influence millions of people. You have to essentially, like you said, you have um, to advertise. 
ahead, what's the ROI on me? If I'm going to put $1,000 into this system a year, how much money can you spend on advertising for me and it still be profitable? It's definitely not what you could bribe a lobbyist. You can't even afford a lobbyist on $1,000 a year. You'd have to have a lot of people. So it really just becomes advertising. And there's no, I call it the hot gates. Congress is the hot gates, just like the Spartans off against a million other people. It only takes a couple of people to plug that gap. And that gap is legal and there's no goat path around. They made sure that the goat path was a goat rope and you go in a big circle and you never ever get to where the problems are. You just keep voting yourself and hoping that, oh, well, maybe the next one, it's in two years, we'll try again. Now, I'm, I'm curious, is um, what prevents someone from selling their share? Per se. Do, do they have a share? It's not a share. There's no it's share. Not a share. They no. have a basically it's like a secure document lockbox, right? So you get to you'll get to put your digital fingerprint, your digital signature in there. And when you do anything on this system, right, in in this blockchain based legislation, it'll show Donnie Gebert put one thousand dollars towards this. I won't be able to hide my name. I won't be able to hide how much money I put into it. It will have to be done in the open. And if you're unwilling to pay for stuff in the open, we can start questioning whether or not you should do this in private or whether you should do it in public. Right. But what if what if someone gives you some obscene amount of dollars to put a fraction of that money towards a certain service on an individual scale? Basically, um, so I, I want to fund this service and someone wants to give me a bunch more money so that I could keep the service well funded. Yeah. Why couldn't they put it in there themselves? Um, because it would only be the influence of one rather than multiple. That, that, that you could put as much money in this into that that organization as you want. You don't have any more de facto shares of that company. You got to remember this is a public venture that we're all kicking in on. We're right. not trying to purchase enough shares to control it. This isn't a stock. Right. There, there, there's Bo stocks. Bodhi, there's no ownership. Right. No the, they, they, right. Essentially, we're looking for a service and we're going to establish like an Indiegogo bucket, a crowdfunding pool where everybody's going to put their money. And then we're going to have an executive team that we're going to pay from the bucket who's going to choose the vendor who's going to provide this service. And it's going to be a competitive bidding process. It's going to be rough on them. And you're going to get really good chief executives out of this process. So because I, they have to, they have to be good to get the bid. They have to run a good company. Otherwise, the the people who we're going to have doing these bids, it's not like congressmen where they're spending your money, and then if you get a shitty vendor, then you get a shitty vendor. That's your life. So that, that's going to happen. So I think I think that uh, 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 I mean that you still really need to get people to understand the blockchain, but but I think a model that may help you somewhat explain what it is that you're talking about is the movie industry model, how uh, all these services, they come together for the purpose of making a movie. Uh, they're, they're not, they're, it's not like one company isn't really making a movie in, the, in, in Hollywood these days. It's multiple companies that get together and they make a movie and it's the companies that they, you know, they provide the best services, they're most cost effective. This just like construction. That's just like construction. Yeah, just right. like construction as well. It's sign right. build. And the process of getting a chief executive in that is someone who understands what he's doing to a level that people seek out and they want him to run their projects. That person, I don't mean him. Uh, yeah. But right. the, the point is, you don't get that process when you vote for some guy who could schmooze votes. Then you just get a schmoozer, never mind if he actually knows how to run anything or knows how to balance a checkbook even. Never mind. He might just be thinking that the law works as long as I could get a law passed. It's good. That'll get you two drinking fountains in a heartbeat. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it all goes awry and we're supposed to be surprised. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just Oroville. Yeah. Yeah. There was government people in charge of that and they screwed it all up. So now a bunch of people get flooded. It's OK. Keep voting. I don't get it. I don't understand. Uh, it's easier to vote than to actually Lynn, try to address the problem it's much easier Lynn, to vote. detroit what's like, going on in california dc that that river in new mexico i mean man the government's got a hit parade in the last four or five years what a mess it's, it's doing really good so uh <laughs> 
You have an interesting concept here. You call it open ledger arbitration, and you say uh, A makes claim against B. Both. Uh, let, let, let me let me show this to the studio audience oh, uh, here. Yeah, let there me, you go. I, so, I brought it up. So, so the, go ahead. The point the whole point of that is once you do this reorganization of the legislature, it could be very difficult keeping a judiciary. Now, I don't want everybody to think that this kind of flips over. I, I originally thought about 12 years to do all of this. So it's not something that flips in a day or two or anything like that. But the arbitration that you would use would go essentially private. There's already private arbiters. You could go, um, if you were a company dealing with another company, you could write a contract so that the only legal issue you have to have is that the contract has to be written. I'm in Texas. So the contract would have to meet the terms of the state. Otherwise, they won't enforce it. But other than that, you can write all your own terms, all your own conditions into this, into your contract. And that if the arbitration, you wouldn't use the state. You'd use a private arbiter and you could determine who it was going to be beforehand. So having private law isn't that difficult. David Friedman is really, really the subject matter expert on this. And having that private law makes or having the private arbitration system takes the state out of um, a lot of the problems where people deal with crimes that have no or uh, no one's been damaged. Mens rea, I think it's called. Nobody's been damaged, but here there is a case. Well, the state can do that because they can make stuff up, but you can't. So it'll cut down on the need for legal services as well as make them a lot more efficient and make them a lot more intelligent. And and you get into something here, which hmm, I, don't, I don't know if I that, quite understand the the intellectual celestial navigation there, where you're right. talking about. Uh, I I mean you use you you use the phrase unique definitions give syntax mathematical precision. I don't necessarily believe that's possible. I would like to hear uh, how that's so possible. So here's the thing about that. When we're trying to arbitrate, we're not trying to play the fucking definition game. Oh, I'm sorry. We're not trying to play the definition <laughs> game like, like pedantic people do. We're not trying to do that. The purpose of arbitration is to be clear and concise with each other, not to run each other around like lawyers do. But then again, they are operating inside of a statutory framework that allows them to act like intellectual chimps. And that's what they do. They go into courtroom and they fling as much intellectual feces as they can and then hope that they win. That's so, that's what, what the state allows. And this arbitration system is, is you're not here to waste anybody's time and we're going to make sure of it. So you take all the definitions. Here's how I was thinking about doing it. You take Mandarin, which has individual unique characters for everything that it does. And you load them in just as data points. Think about them like stars in the night sky, right? Mm -hmm. So load all those things in. You translate them into English. Then you take Black's Law Dictionary and you lay it over the top of the translation. That way you have all the legal terms covered. Anything that's not covered from Mandarin, either way, you have unique points. And you just throw them up like stars in the night sky, like in EVE Online. But those are your definitions. Now, anytime you were to type in a sentence, you'd be able to connect with lines. You'd be able to connect those stars together. That would be the shape of your argument. And you'd be able to point at certain things like, why is this word here? What does it mean? What is it? Is this used out of context? Does this fit the facts? It's verbally diagramming your argument in three-dimensional space for observation. So I could look at what you're saying and go, nope, this is, this is how he's misrepresenting this. Right here, this word, the reason he's saying it's here, here's a logical fallacy right here. Because it'll be in between two points, there'll be a line of argumentation. Why is this? What is the purpose of this line here? And that's how you'll spot fallacies, and you'll be able to literally see what somebody is saying. And because we've simply agreed to not move the definitions for the purposes of arbitration, not to say there's objective definitions. I'm not going oh, there. Good. I'm oh, good. Oh, good. Woo! We're, we're, we're <laughs> anti-objective definitionists, so that's good. Nope. That's good. No, we're just we're just streamlining the communication process of you don't have to like the word. We could flip the word out for the definition. We're just we need to so, know what you're saying, how, why. So it sounds what like what you're basically talking about is, uh, hey, before we're gonna talk, before we're gonna have arbitration, let's make sure that we all agree to the terms. Yeah. And you're talking about a method that makes it easier to clearly and quickly do that. Is that correct? You know what? Yes. And you know what? I'll say there's a little minarchism in that too. And that is, is if you 
like the terms, if you don't like the terms and conditions in the arbitration GUI, too bad. Too bad. We're not changing the words for you. All the words are there. If you don't like the one that we're using and you don't like the definition, just go find the one that you need and use that. We're not taking it personal. We're trying to figure out what you're saying, not what you're trying to hide. And you're not going to be able to hide it out there because I'll see it. I don't know It'll if that's why, – why, why is that a minarchism thing? That seems like a I am not going to let you hey, move the goalpost on me in the middle of the conversation. Too many anarchists yelling, you can't tell me what to do. To, to deal, yes, if you don't like the arbitration, fine. Well, yeah, getting, you, you could say you can't tell me what to do. That's fine. But if you want to participate, you're going to have to. I mean, you can make that decision. I'm not telling you what to do. All I'm telling you is if you want to play ball today, you're going to have yep. to follow these rules. If you don't want to play ball, that's fine. But, you know. I'm like, not putting gravity on you, but this is the way it is. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's a minarchism, anarchism thing. I think that's a do you choose to participate and if you don't choose to participate, then great, but there will be consequences. If you want to try to engage in commerce in a community okay. that is primarily following certain standards, good luck. <laughs> Frankly, your reasonableness is completely blowing my point. Oh, but... no. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. I'm just saying, even for the belligerent people who are like, we're going to change. No, you're not. No, you're not. This is a very good way to see what somebody's trying to hide, or if they just don't, if they're not sure what they're saying, this will be real easy to figure out. We're going to three-dimensionally diagram that sentence, and we're going to look at it, and we'll get people straightened out if they're confused, and we'll get people exposed if they're full of it, and, so, and it'll make the arbitration very easy, very easy. What, what, are the, what are the essential points of what you're offering here that you'll say... This, if you don't do this, this is it's useless. And what, like for instance, you have described a a model, which I don't know if you're saying this is the model that you must use for arbitration, or if you're just giving an example of of how one service might use a model that maybe you say, well, this, this service is going to be the best service. Is, is this like if you don't use this model, you're dead? Nope. This is for the people who are like, listen, if you really understand the government, the only real reason we have it is for defense and for arbitration. Like those are the bare minimum you need to have. There's no point in having clan warfare to dis to, to deal with disputes. There's no need for that. Raises the and, cost, raises the cost of coercion tremendously when you do and, that. And strategic level defense, not even theater. Theater is essentially done by a bunch of armed people in any given region strategic level defense is essentially it's beyond anybody's scope so somebody else has to do it but really that's all you need so i the the gui idea is really just to put people's mind at ease like how would we ever be able to arbitrate without learned knowledgeable individuals um in the old irish system was called bray and law b r mm -hmm. b r e h o n and and that's what it's essentially bray and law you can have anybody do it, but you have to understand that person will be able to understand. I mean, you could ask anybody to arbitrate for you, but you're probably going to ask somebody who's good at it. If, so if, you wouldn't necessarily need a lawyer, just a really smart friend who could look at something. Somebody who knows fallacies can look at, a look, can look at an argument and tell in 10 seconds if it's bunk because of a fallacy. That guy's a huge help. If I... Let alone... If I understand, oh, if I understand, and I'm not sure that I fully, uh, uh, I, I watched some of your videos that you had on your channel, and it's interesting the ones you chose. Like I saw, I can't say that I understood it all, but I, I heard the debate about or the discourse about common law versus, did they call it statutory law? Is that was that the difference? Yeah. Uh, yep. If I understand the fundamental differences, which is my problem with statutory law, statutory law freezes things. And well, it doesn't really freeze things, but but it but it but it creates an arbitrary nature, uh, a, a completely arbitrary nature within its frozen status, where now people will fight over the definitions of words and conveniently change the definitions of words so that they are they are given justification to do what they do by the words in a statutory law. Uh, whereas common law is based more in principles and standards. So you're looking at principles and standards and say, okay, who violated what principle, what standard? It's not, well, section 4C, 12B3 says this. No, it's, hey, did you violate the NAP? 
There, I said it. I said nap on this show. I did it. <laughs> did, you, did you violate the nap? You know, okay, okay, sure. it's pretty boneheaded, pretty obvious you violated the nap, or maybe maybe there's other vet, you know standards that come into play. So that's essentially what it sounds like you're talking about here. You're talking about moving towards a common law uh, uh, principles-driven uh, uh, arbitration rather than fossilized in stone arbitration from God, well, from, from law God, I'll look. say. Just to avoid mixing terms, I, I, I delineate between statutory and common and brain. But uh, the, the point is that the law is no longer controlled by one group, and it's not necessarily uniform. Um, right. And I don't so believe in uniform law, so I'm down with that. Right. Because every situation is different. Right. And those, you know, a judge, not a judge that is essentially useless until that case gets to the Supreme Court. A judge can do whatever he wants. However, he'll get it, he'll get overturned by the Texas Supreme Court. So the same way that you take care of an executive with one with one election, you really only have to get the Supreme Court in any given uh, judiciary yeah, system. Right. Got the whole thing from the top down. That's the nature of it. So now the whole country is essentially run by 10 people. Really? Really? Yeah. And then you got 50 that are playing. Not even 50 well, that yeah, have okay, power right. in Congress, but they don't have power to override. They have power to influence and pull, but they don't have power to override. So, honestly, uh, just the whole purpose of this is get rid of corruption, figure out how to transition without it being a disaster. And actually, I was going to get to that and your your transition, which I I I mean, your your transition to me is is essentially what I've been talking about. The name of this show is Viz Previs, and Viz means power. Previous means individual. It's uh, advocating for individual power and, by extension, free association power. And advocating for actually pursuing, creating that power for yourself and enabling others to do the same because you understand that free associations with the power to say yes or no to coercive enterprises, that's what's going to do in the state. And to me, that's essentially what you're talking about. Well, you, you may not be talking about doing it with the state, but you are essentially talking about a mechanism that allows a free association to emerge that will render the current method of governance obsolete. Right. And honestly, that's how uh, people are a little superstitious and a little into their old habits. I don't foresee the state ever disappearing of its own accord. I don't. And, It'll and never disappear of its own accord. I mean, never. Point, I've been doing levels of analysis at this point. I'm no longer interested in the outcome. I'm just curious in what would a solution look like because, you know, enough people have screamed enough about this that something should come of it. I'm, inter so, I, I'm interested in the outcome. I am. However, I don't believe that I have any idea of the outcome. I, I want to set in motion events that allow for the emergence of something other than what is, but I'm not sure that something other than what is will fully occur. But man, we should at well, least. What you ask for on that? I mean, that's the that's the basic life goal of any arsonist. He just wants to see something that isn't right now. That's it. Yeah, has to do it. Well, I, I want to see something specific that isn't not not uh, just. Now you have a vision, and once you have the vision, you've constrained it to something intelligent. And all I'm saying is. This provides, if you're thinking about it the way the Army does a range, this is your right and your left boundaries. We're going to go in this general direction. What do you think? I'm not saying how it's going to be done in every county, in every zip code, in every state, or at the federal level. I'm saying this is one way to effectively disassemble this without lighting our hair on fire as a result yeah. and see what, because there's, there's like 100 stages there, man. Like this is the... Project man project management waterfall. Yeah, this is the biggest waterfall of all time. So, I mean, you have to see if how many people are interested, and then you have to educate to make sure you have enough, and then you would have to put up a system and let them go over, and then you'd have to get the state to let it go and figure out what's what portions of the federal government they're going to let dissolve and not. Do, I mean, when does the federal government ever declare something useless and they don't do it anymore? They don't. They won't. They're still giving. They're still giving out subsidies for wool, for the, World War I. The only things that the federal government will declare uh, will actually end are things that had previously supported their political opponents. 
That's it. If it doesn't, if, if, if it's not something that's like, for instance, the Republicans are now uh, working to end some, some program where some confiscated money is given to certain uh, uh, non-governmental entities. They're ending that program, but they're only, I would say, they're only ending that program because it conveniently empowers the quote-unquote left. That's it. That's it. I, I have I have full faith that they're if out, it was empowering them, it wouldn't end. They're out of they're out of places to get more money, so they have to rob the honorable senator from Ohio to pay the honorable senator from Nevada. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. So the honorable senator from Oklahoma who just retired, his program is going in the crapper because he's not representing those people anymore, and the money is going to go to the other guy. So we're we're, it. we're 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 at the we're we're actually we're a little bit over what we normally do, but that's cool. That's fine. Uh, awesome. uh, let me let me ask Bodie. Do you have any last questions for Donnie here? Um, not, not really. Not that question. No, not that one. Not that one no. either. I can't go down. I don't want to go down that. No, don't, path, right? don't. No, I'm kidding. I have no idea. I'm just. <laughs> I, would, I would love to do another show to talk about some of the more nuances, though. Yeah, we, we, we. I mean, if you'd like to come back, we maybe we can have him on I State because that's where we go into a lot more uh, theory and philosophy and stuff like I really that. Really want to talk. I'd, I'd love to dig into the individual um, power in the system. Yeah. This was a general overview. I want to get into the nitty gritty of how it, how, how from an individual what you have to do to to actually uh, the the more uh, I don't know how to say um day to day cuz there's not a lot of day to day to it it's really more a couple hours a year and you know actions you have to take is there an app is there a website how do you actually and, and that that was the, pur the purpose of the Indiegogo was to try and fund a pretty big ad campaign and getting all of the software up and stuff like that and indiegogo was a no-go so now i am looking around to see anybody who uh i'm working with some people right now we're just getting started so uh there's no software up yet but i actually have to talk to uh the software guy today in a little while i'll be and, interested in that yep and honestly there's more uh, there's some corporate applications for using the blockchain so we're kind of looking at some of the corporate applications coming up front. That way we could fund the back end. And we're trying to work through the Libertarian Party of Texas. We, we have talked to one or two people, haven't talked to too many yet. And we would like to use the Libertarian Party of Texas as a vector to just push this out. Once it's been vetted and everybody gets their checks and balances and they understand that this isn't Donnie's, you know, insanity just unfolding on the Internet. Why not gonna, both? Why can't it be Donnie's insanity and a good idea? It right. can be both. Here's it the can thing. be you both. Remember, if I become the voice of reason, everyone's way off the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that so. way all the time, so I understand. So so why don't we're, why don't you give some uh, closing remarks of uh, where where are you going next? Uh, what what's your your I mean, you, you, you talked about it a little bit just there, but uh, w what's your next move? And for the audience that's listening, what can the audience do that might be interested in seeing this vision happen? Um, my website is www.direct-republic.com. Um, never mind all the Indiegogo stuff. I still have to pay the guy to redo the stuff after the Indiegogo campaign. There is a, a similar... PowerPoint is on the website right at the top. You could download it and look at it. Um, there's probably a lot of questions because it's a big Twinkie. There's a lot of things to look at. You have to really understand the Constitution and get the mechanics. And so for somebody who's been studying a lot of political, if you understand Karl Marx and anarcho-capitalism, you're probably fine. You're probably fine to read to that, through that, most of that. If you, the more, the greater your economic understanding, the more you'll understand. It's, it's basic um, organization without control. Hmm. So it could unfold. There's certain parts. It's that a decentralized it republic. It's horrible. Yep, I, can't, I can't tell it's you horizontal. how some of the things fold out because it'll be different for you and for me and for. Right. Just, and this is where the spontaneous order comes into being. I don't know, man. I don't know. Right. I but don't know order, who's going to pick what. Everybody likes having a decent support structure. The problem is 
the government in theory is supposed to be providing that for the taxes and it's really become more of a they're going to take the taxes they're going to provide something you're going to get what you want or you're going to get what you're getting and that's about it so if that's the way it's going to be we're going to keep seeing high levels of dissatisfaction um more and more turmoil I, I kind of don't blame the lawyers for trying to change the law, trying to change the verbiage because there's really no way to win. There's no functional way to win okay. unless you do something within the legal system. And that that's just a lot of chicanery. So, so if you're interested, go to his website. Is there a place where they can contact you to talk more if um, they want to talk to you? Yeah, my, my, my email's on the website and I'm pretty good about getting back to people, but it's, it might take me a day or two. I'm working. I got stuff to do. So if anybody's looking for information, that's super easy. I mean, if you're looking for more than what's on the website, send me an email. If you're looking for something specific, send me a question. It's fine. And if you want, you could start like a, you could start like a, a, a thread with a bunch of questions in it and we'll, we'll do it the next time I see you. And uh, yeah, we will definitely want to have you on again sometime soon. Uh, I just want to say a couple housekeeping things here. First off, uh, I will be back on this page about 9.30 tonight with my uh, other co-host, uh, my favorite co-host, Bodie, my favorite co-host. I said it. Ooh. I said it there. I hope I burned I, you. Yeah, I upset you today. That's he fine. did. He did upset me, and I upset him. It was great. So uh, I'll be on with uh, he, Professor Rambo, a.k.a. Dimitri, or Dimitri, a.k.a. Professor Rambo, however you want to burn that. We're going to be talking full auto. We'll be talking about the shooting today. And uh, ramifications for uh, folks that, you know, what should, what should, what should you be thinking about uh, right now as far as uh, preparation is concerned. And this previous will be on whenever it's on. It's not a regularly scheduled show. Only Full Auto is the only regularly scheduled show we do. And Bodie, do we have anything? Oh, we're going to be at Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest next week, both Bodie Ooh. and I. And both of us are speaking I'm speaking Sunday. Uh, I guess it'll fall on the 24th, Bodie, or the 25th. I think the 25th. I'll be speaking on the 25th, as will Bodie. I will be speaking about power this previous. And Bodie, you'll be speaking about seizing the means of production. Se seizing your own. Yes. <sighs> yes. But we're well, really say seizing That's, means of production because it's more it's provocative. Intriguing. He doesn't it's mean it at all like that, but it's going to be interesting. And Donnie, yeah. I want to thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, we've actually tried to get, we, 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 we've kind of crossed up, uh, but uh, finally glad to finally get you on. Uh, great yep. stuff. Yeah. I, I, I think you, I think you're onto a great idea. Uh, awesome. It's an exciting I, idea. And I'm, and I love ideas that are actually action and doing and not just theorizing and complaining and fear mongering or whatever other else things that many of us anarchists have a tendency to do. It. Don't worry, I went through all of those phases. <laughs> we the all do. and the crying, <laughs> puffing we... into the paper bag, <laughs> crying in the shower. I went through all of them. Yeah. Oh, we all we all have, and and we revisit them at times too. It's not like they're ever completely gone from our lives. All this, you know, you see something like. <laughs> <laughs> I can get through this. I can get through this. So we'll we'll see you guys when we see you guys. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Uh, we'll we'll be back again, and we'll also be on YouTube. And if you want to find anything and everything, go to istv.me. That's easy. It says it right up there on the top of the of the thing. This previous and it says istv.me. Donnie, how easy is that to remember? Istv.me. Even I'll remember it. I Even you'll bullshit. remember it. And you don't remember. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you remember everything. I don't know. Uh, so thank you, everybody. We'll, we'll see you the next time we see you. Peace out.